safety follow the origin of these um, multi-grain sized deposits. By the way, we call these things diamonds. We don't know what they are. It's better rather than call them a debris flow deposit or a hyper-concentrated flow deposit. Call them a diamond, a multi-grain size uh, sediment. So a lot of what we do in Himalaya is reconstructing ice extents is looking at the sedimentology and this uh, <coughs> set of the geomorphology of these deposits to uh, work out if they're really glacial deposits or landslide deposits. Um, and there's a lot of uh, controversy over the extent of ice in Tibet and Himalayas because people have erroneously attributed uh, particular deposits to some glacial origin or landslide origin. And another really complicated uh, factor with looking at these deposits is mountain glaciers, particularly in high mountains, like the Himalayan, to a certain extent, these smaller cirque glaciers in these uh, volcanic zones. And much of the debris that gets uh, into the ice comes from rock avalanche material, super glacial debris, stuff that falls on the surface of the ice. Some glacial sediments, sediments that form underneath the ice. But a lot of mountain glaciers, the sediment actually form uh, from melting out from the surface of the ice or within the ice. And often the clasps don't get shaped at all, so they can be really angular. So that makes our life even more complicated. And like Esther Pan said, the further complication is that in steep mountain environments like this when you have moraines, they can collapse and be re-mobilized as debris flows, forming hummocks that can be misinterpreted as hummocky moraines, meltdown moraines, meltdown hills. But I mean, in, in contrast, if you get a really great data set, it's really tight, and you know that this is a moraine that just means really simple. Yeah, but you can, I mean, the, I mean, the morphology of those features are so different. By the of the sediment of their base, as well as it's still detrimental to the ice. Um, what happens is the sediment goes around the flat, and it screws off the edges, and the flat sediment is going around like this, and it makes the flat bullet shape, so it runs on this edge with pressure shadow, the edge can get rounded, and then another one, the flat, the large flat, it's a big strip, and it's quite easy.